Day 31. It's been exactly one month since our arrival on this island. Most of us have become accustomed to our new way of life. Our temporary farm has quickly become too small, but we started a much larger farm on the side of a large river running into the bay. This should give us sustainable food for the foreseeable future. In terms of shelter, we've uncovered more of the underground ruins that Jeffrey found, and are now living in some of its rooms. Remarkably, the ruins appear to be completely safe, with only minimal damage to its structural integrity. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Bat server. Oh, I like this song. Okay. So, I'm up here above my witch farm. The reason I made this place is I want a lot of gunpowder. Um, for TNT, obviously. For two projects. Obviously the one that we did, what, two episodes ago? Where we're clearing out that big area underground at uh, our jungle base? There's that, and then there's also... I want to make a nether perimeter for a gold farm. Seriously, that creeper's... And there's a creeper there? <laughs> there's just... How are these guys spawning? Oh, hey, hey, hey. You don't exist. Ready? Wait, I got this. Screenshot! Perfect. <laughs> That's gonna be the... Uh, screenshot er, for the thumbnail. Is this guy, does he not exist as well? He doesn't. Oh, weird. That is really weird. What is a zombie? Does he not exist? Do all these mobs not exist? How about the villagers? Do they exist? I'm wondering if it's, is, if it's something with me. No. Hold on, let's see. It doesn't think I'm up there, does it? Oh, and the sand is broken too. Huh. Oh. I have 25,000 entities. Is that the glitchy sand, I wonder? Okay, this is this is weird. I'm going to have to relog. Look at all the squid. Uh, maybe that's just a... Uh, it's nothing special. It's not like the... Massive squid glitch. Okay, let me relog and see what happens. Alright, it appears that everything is now back to normal. Uh, that's an interesting glitch. I was AFKing up there a bit. So the second project that I need TNT for... Oh, actually, we're gonna... Hold on. Mikulina wanted to know how many blocks you have to drop a witch for it to die. Let's see. This is at... Y60. And this is at... Y29, so that's 31 blocks. I think that I made this exact. Alright, there we go. I'm not sure, but I think I wanted to have a possible experience mode, so I'm pretty sure that I made this exact. Alright, so let's see. How many down here? Oh! It's filled up quite a bit. So I think I have... Well, let's see, how many entities are we looking at? 20. I think I only have, like, 15 or so chests. Uh, let's see. What do we want to take out? We want to take out gunpowder. Let's grab a couple gunpowder from here. Alright, now, hopefully... Uh, we want to activate that. It's working? It's working. Oh, yeah, I forgot I had all this junk in here. Uh, we'll just leave it. <laughs> I'm not going to do anything with it now. Okay, we're going to filter out the gunpowder. So, I have just a little bit in here. Remember, there are those five chests full of gunpowder that I need for Mikulina. And I still haven't told you the second project. Oh, wait, I think I did. The So, I want to make a nether perimeter for a gold farm, right? And I just... Gold is really cool. I think I'm going to use it mostly for food. I'm going to either have golden carrots or... It would be so cool to just walk around with golden apples, too. Uh, so that's a possibility. Now, five chests here. I think I'm almost done filling these up. Yep, just this is the last chest. All of these are filled. And I think I might be getting a little bit of gold for this, too. I forget exactly what our deal was uh, for this. But let's see. Let's go to the nether. So 
I'm planning to make a full out nether perimeter. I might half slab part of it, but I want to use TNT for the most of it. I just want to completely clear it out. I'm actually going to make it right around here near my base. Ends up this is actually... What is this? No, it's nothing. This is actually a pretty good spot for a nether perimeter for two reasons. It's just about far enough away from spawn so that it's not going to be running into people's tunnels and having zombie pigmen spawn up there. And it's also pretty close to spawn, so it's not too difficult to get to. I mean, it's just like 30 seconds on my ice track. And there's quite a bit of lava around here. Ooh, I'm lagging a little bit. I don't know why. Uh, I guess probably all this lava, actually. In my old single-player world, before I started uh, the bat server, I had a nether perimeter where I put lava everywhere. Like, instead of half-slabbing or destroying stuff, I just flooded lava like Zisto. I think Zisto started one like that too. Uh, but yeah, and my game would just crash whenever I went there. So that didn't end up too well. So, uh, let's see. I have the coordinates written down and we're gonna... Oh, uh, we don't have anything to mark it out with. Alright, so the deal is... Here, let me just go roughly there. What is it? 240, negative 180. Where is that? This way, 240... Oh, negative 180s this way. Oh, we can't get there, can we? Hmm. Uh, just dig down a little bit. Oh, hello. There we go. This is totally safe. Uh huh. All right. So somewhere around here is it negative 180? Oh, we still have quite a ways to go, actually. Yeah, like around. Oh man, okay, here. This feels kind of far away, is this right? 180, yeah. I had negative 240, so right here. There's our first spot. And then the other spot is over there, and this is mostly Lava Lake. Now we're gonna run into some trouble, like up there, you see all these shelves, that's where we're gonna use the TNT. So I've already got quite a bit of TNT, but I'm gonna keep, uh, keep farming more. We need probably, double chests full of TNT. I'm guessing. Not to mention for that uh, underground thing we're also going to need uh, maybe like a chest full of TNT I would think to get the amount of space we want. Uh, by the way I'm on with Fox, Jelly, and Mikulina. Very busy today. Alright let's see. Uh, make this a little safer. I can do that later. Okay so this is going to be definitely off camera work. Except for when I use TNT, of course. When I light the TNT, I will definitely record it. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go to spawn now where there's some new stuff with the living portal prank. Oh man, I just couldn't wait to do this. Okay, so we're going to look at the living portal prank in just a sec, but look at this. It's one of those... It's one of those blocks where... Or one of the log blocks where there's bark everywhere. I'm so excited that we can now do that, so... We're going to look at that in just a sec, but let's go check out the living portal prank. Over here, the portal didn't grow. Evidently, the pirates are back. Oh, oh, by the way... Oh, come on. I'm only wearing boots now to make it more difficult. Because I wasn't liking the diamond armor. Oh, oh gosh, we're just going to get flooded by zombies now. Alright, let's look at this quick. So, up here... See, all these signs are, we're back. It's buried treasure. So the pirates are back. It's got gold in it. Yeah, they stole my gold. So they took everything in the chest for the living portal. And uh, the only hint that we've got is... Tip, check the lore master first from the narrator. I think that's what, he, what we said, right? The narrator? I think so. Okay. So, uh, we're going to look at the book at the Lore Master's shop real quick here. Also, up, I think yesterday probably, at the time this is going up, uh, UHC came out. So this is separate from the UHC server. This is just another uh, season of UHC, just like the last one, where no health regen, Minecraft made, and everyone kills each other. And then the UHC, it's, uh, oh, I always love UHC. 
But and then there's the UHC server, which I put up uh, just one episode of so far, and that was building a dungeon, and I've done a bunch more on there since then. Uh, where where was this? I think it's in here. Yep, everything you need to know, second edition. So this is about pirates. And the gist of it is, you can read this if you want, I'm not going to read it all on camera. But the gist of it is, their one weakness is that they're basically blind. They're completely colorblind. They don't see color at all. They just see shapes. Uh, so we might trick them into giving us back the stuff with some renamed iron was one of the things they suggested. Did I go through every page in this? Just want to make sure. Okay, there we go. In case you want to read it. So, the UHC server, I'm having a ton of fun just creative building, really. Uh, the server concept is that for one week, everyone would get geared up uh, in ultra hardcore mode, of course. So, if you die, you're banned till next week. And then at the end of the week, it PvP is turned on, everyone can fight each other. Of course, there are some uh, weird quirks about it, mainly that if you spend more time, you could get like full protection for diamond armor but it's it's definitely uh, just a test to see how it goes and mostly what I'm excited about for the server is that uh, we can just play together like since n it's not a big public server uh, you guys can come on we can hang out and stuff do dungeons or look at some of the uh, other things I've built I'm not sure whether I'll put up another episode of building I might just put up a short one to show what I've done but let's look at this. This is a block, I believe, metadata changer. So, in this case, this is something like uh, an oak log, or just a log with a metadata of like, I think, 17. <laughs> I don't know if Fox has seen the video of how to do this. By the way, the video uh, of how to do this is from Old Ganon. And I'll link to his video of this in the description. It is so cool. You can do, you can make the old stone slabs. If it was easier to do, and if you could pick them up, I'm not sure if you can pick them up, then I would make some and use them because I love that block. It's a really cool block. I don't know why they took it out. Huh, it's weird. They replaced its block value with like netherrock, or not netherrock, nether brick, didn't they? But anyway, we're gonna. <laughs> so I'm going to use this for these trees because it always annoys me uh, that the tops of these don't have bark. So this one, I don't know if we need one. No, okay, we don't need it here. And I'll explain this to foxes and be right back when I uh, change all these. Alright, how cool is this? So it occurred to me that I never actually did show you guys how this works. Uh, essentially, it's changing whatever you want to call that slash zero number at the end. So if you want to get the numbers, uh, the block data values of items, then you can hit F3 and H, which is the same uh, thing you use to get durability. So you can see that actually all of these logs have the same original number, which is 17, 0, 0, 17. And the only thing that changes is that 0, 1, 2, 3 at the end there. So what this contraption does is it actually changes that number. So if we take oak wood and we want to increase this number by one and turn it into spruce wood well, what we would do is we'd shoot one arrow on the ground there place that down shoot one arrow here pull this lever whoops pull that block back okay so you see the arrow is now floating there it actually thinks that it's still over here so when we break this and place a pressure plate right below it you see when it lands it actually changes uh, that value it increments it by one so it's this is now one it used to be zero and the reason it does that is it's trying to increment the one of the pressure plate which it falls on so we can use this to create these which are logs with that last value of 16 so the way this would work is oak is zero spruce is one birch is two jungle is three and we want 16 so we could use oak and we could shoot 16 arrows into the ground here before we place it or we could use spruce and shoot uh, 15 into the ground birch 14 you get the idea and if we wanted say birch wood 
uh, with all of the bark around it instead, it would be 16 minus 1, so 15 as the number we would want. This would be 14, this would be 13 as the ending value. And if I didn't do a great job of explaining that, then go check out Ganon's video, of course, linked in the description again. I highly recommend checking out. There's some crazy stuff you can do with this. But that's going to be it for this episode. I'm going to work on the nether perimeter a little bit, work on getting some TNT, stuff like that. I don't think this is supposed to be here. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.